What's up folks? I just chopped together a quick little video from the 35 plus race yesterday. It was actually 35 and 40s combined, so two different categories racing in one race. And here's my commentary. Hope you guys like it. So here we are, uh, 55 minute race. Um, pretty decent group. Uh, some good talent. Uh, it was the first time, probably since week one, that we had a field of, of at least 70 riders and, um, and some good talent. It was nice to have uh, Phil Tinsman back in the group. He's uh, one of the guys who always watched that would always animate the race. So just speeding up the uh, course here so you, so you can have a look of what we're up against. Um, wide open again really nice roads. The roads are uh, well taken care of uh, here at Dominguez Hills. Uh, this is a downhill to a right hand turn. If you don't know the course, this kicks up and early in the race you feel great. Later in the race on this little puncher, uh, it takes a lot out of you. Um, so there's series leader Danny Cam in the blue jersey racing for Monster Media. Uh, as you can see, they're already pretty strung out. Going pretty good here. Uh, I'm going to cut this is, I think, the third lap in. We're crossing the uh, start finish line. Uh, I have a teammate right there, and attacks are starting to go, so I'm starting to move around. And as I go into the corner, my handlebar actually slipped pretty bad. I hit something, and you can see how far they went up. You couldn't see my tire uh, in the initial frame, and then uh, after I hit that bump, it went down. So having a handlebar slip is not a free lap, you know, so I went over to Velo Fix, uh, who's on neutral support, to yell at the mechanic there, hey, let me get a tool for my handlebars, uh, which he got ready for the following lap. I rolled over and he passed me the correct tool, and I was able to start tightening up my uh, stem. You can see I'm turning that thing pretty significantly. I'm turning it a lot actually, so I was lucky to not actually go over the handlebars when uh, those handlebars slipped. So it took me about uh, three thirds of a lap to uh, get everything back tight to where I felt confident that it wouldn't slip again. And uh, once I got that set, um, I was able to hand to a back and off and uh, finished off my race. So uh, thanks, fellow fix, for being at the race. And, uh, and uh, attentive to what I needed. Uh, so here we are. I'm back in the race. Handlebars are tight. I see an opportunity to, uh, to attack the field because there's a group off the front. Uh, they moved to the left just enough for me to slide through. I uh, kick on the gas here, which is kind of a tough, tough spot, even though it was uphill. Um, with the tailwind today, which was rare, we usually have a, a headwind going up that hill. Um, Gonna speed it up here. Caught one guy uh, going across to the next group. Two guys right here. I seem to be pretty happy uh, to be in this group. Uh, hit squad rider on the front. It looks like Dennis Grob. Uh, he's a strong rider, um, and I knew that he would more than likely just close the gap. As you can see, I have a teammate there. I believe that's uh, is that Max. I can't tell if that's Max Fernandez. It is. So the group started to look at each other. So I just continued to get on the gas because what you did not see is uh, I turned around and actually noticed that we had a gap. So I wanted to keep the pressure on and uh, keep the pressure pretty, pretty uh, high. And so I wanted to take a nice uh, digger to break up that group and to see who really wanted to play bikes today. So as you can see, I took a pretty significant uh, move and this is a little later in the race maybe about 25 minutes to go uh, there's a group off the front and Jason Madoff is a really strong rider he's proven himself over the last year that he can ride hard but I have a teammate off the front and it's only two guys so he's telling me to take a pull and I'm telling him why would I take you over to the break right now there's two guys off the front and one of the guys is my teammate, Josh Alvarez. So right now I'm in the control, I'm in total control. Uh, he either goes back to the field and I'll go with him 
or he pulls. Uh, fortunate for him, um, Phil Tinsman from Monster Media actually came across, um, and Phil knew from the get-go uh, that I wasn't gonna pull because I have a teammate. As you can see, he didn't waste any time. I think Josh for a second thought about not uh, going with Phil. Um, if he did not go, I would have waited a little longer to let the gap open up, and then I would eventually jump across to Phil uh, because I wouldn't be that confident to have Phil Tinsman in the break with Josh Alvarez, um, who was off the front, which we call him Frenchie, is uh, Evan. Evan is a 24 hours of Le Mans winner. That's right, he races bikes for 24 hours. And I believe his last race, he averaged 25 or 26 miles an hour for 24 hours. So I uh, cut the video up to show that when we made the junction to Evan and Josh, and now, it's uh was it five of us and now we're all rotating um once we got to the break i was okay with rotating because i wanted to make show them that um, i would contribute to the break and to make sure that we stay off the front so jason just slipped off again and uh as i mentioned earlier he's a strong rider so you do not want to give him too much uh too much leeway because he would definitely ride away from, from us so you know yeah i'm a sprinter but i just uh you got to learn to put your nose in the wind and, and uh, ride a little hard sometimes uh, harder than you want uh, but i did a great job i think just uh paying attention to the group um i was lucky enough to have a teammate in the break and you see phil tinsman uh kind of hitting off over the top now i could have sat up and, and depended on someone else to do it but all i did was just push on the gas a little harder and shut that down. You don't want to play around when you have strong guys like that. These two guys together will ride away from the entire field. So um, you can't you can't let those guys get together and, and get motivated to get a gap. So um, this was Josh Josh's second race. So he's doing a great job to make the break uh, in his second, uh, his second race of the day. And I believe they were back to back. Um, so here he is just sacrificing for myself it's it's great when you don't have to really talk to your teammates that much and they know exactly what's going on uh, we had some communication towards the end of the race but for the most part uh, i had the fresh legs as it was my first race um, and so he's pretty much doing all the dirty work uh let's see what's going on here i think we are getting down pretty close to the end uh this could be about three laps to go um, Jason's taking a nice chop right here. So the wind was actually reversed today. As you turn right, uh, this is turn one, you had a big block headwind. Uh, if I was showing you my numbers, yeah, I was easily doing six, uh, 650, 700 watts when you're taking a nice dig through here. Um, and there's our Frenchie. You see he's got that extra water bottle cage in the back because he rides uh, these uh, endurance rides 24 hours is nuts um, so a little games going on right now I told uh, my teammate Josh just to follow the moves you don't have to attack just to follow the moves and again you know you get these two guys you're talking about Jason Evan and Phil three of the strongest guys in the race you cannot allow them to roll off the front together uh, possibly one I don't know if one guy can make it solo on this course. This hill right here just takes everything out of you when you're a solo rider. Uh, you're coming down the hill at like 30 plus and then when you're cresting the hill, if you're lucky and going good, you know, you're doing 23. So uh, it's not in your advantage to be off the front uh, solo on this course. It's just too hard. I believe we're looking at two laps to go um, until we'll be sprinting for the finale. Josh is still doing a great job just rotating keeping things together I allow Phil to slip in right here because I thought he was the biggest threat to me uh, Phil is a proven winner uh, he's a, definitely an endurance rider he does all these crazy dirt rides and, and he has some speed underneath him so he was the guy I really wanted to keep an eye on Evan the Frenchie you definitely want to keep an eye on him but he he wasn't my biggest concern because I, I knew that he doesn't have the finishing speed like Phil. So here we are, one lap to go. Um, right now, I'm just thinking about uh, being calm, 
uh, making sure that I'm in the right gears, uh, you know, making sure I don't do anything like skip a pedal or, uh, or let anyone slip off the front. So right here, I believe someone attacks. Uh, yeah, so we slow up and anyone, any opportunist uh, would go, as you can see, I was paying attention and I shut it down right away. If I didn't shut it down right away, Evan would have went pretty hard on the backside here, which is a gradual uphill. You can kind of see it if you look just over the horizon before you get a downhill. So it was very important for me to hop on that right away and shut it down. At this point, I think Evan is pretty much committed to ride the front. Uh, we come around the turn with uh, one turn to go. And I have my head down right here, and uh, I didn't even pay attention that Evan was attacking, and my teammate Josh was coming off the wheel just a little bit. Uh, luckily, Phil reacted right away, and uh, I was able to get on top of my 5311 gear. And this was as the siding point right here. Did you see how fast I closed the gap in the corner? It's because everyone else was coasting, and I was still pedaling. I was able to get on top of the gear again and bring home another victory for Memphis 20 Bahati Foundation. Uh, congratulations to everyone else who participated. We had a great day, and uh, thanks for watching.